Sure, election night's exciting. But with four hours between the first poll closings at 7 Eastern and the West Coast closings at 11, you're probably going to need something more to talk about than which network's holograms look the most like something out of Star Wars. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. As the sole providers of exit polling data to the news networks, we here at Edison Research want to show you how to become a Jedi Master of Election Night. So here's a handy guide to what you're going to see and how to be the smartest person in the room at your Election Night party. So first things first, watching TV during the day isn't going to tell you anything useful. Until 5 p.m., all of our exit poll data is kept behind an ironclad quarantine. No phones, no internet, and nobody can release anything at all. No state can be called until all its polls are officially closed. So those leaked early results you see on the interwebs? Most assuredly fake. Now at 7, polls start closing in a few states, and you're going to start seeing some immediate calls. You'll see a graphic telling you who's projected to win each state, and maybe a little progress bar saying what percentage of the official vote count is in. And this can be a little confusing, like when CNN called the South Carolina primary for Gingrich with 2% reporting, and Romney was actually leading at the time. So how could they possibly call it for Newt? Well, it seems like voodoo, but the truth here is simple. We hire thousands of people around the country to ask voters who they just voted for, and we also scoop up the official totals as soon as they're ready. This allows us to be ahead of the official curve by the time the polls close or pretty soon thereafter. At 7.30, polls will close in a few more states, including Ohio, one of the biggest swing states in the entire nation. Don't hold your breath for this one. It's likely that Ohio will be so close that a winner won't be declared for many hours. In 2004, a margin of about 150,000 votes in Ohio was what made George Bush the president and not John Kerry. Hi, George Walker Bush. This could certainly happen again. I solemnly swear. At 8 o'clock p.m., there's a bunch more poll closings, but likely not too many surprises this hour. So it's a good opportunity to stump your guests with some election trivia. <laughs> Everyone's going to be talking about how close the race is, so here's a great question to drop. What happens if the thing ends up in a tie at 269 electoral votes apiece? Too tight to call! Turns out, the state delegations in the House of Representatives vote to choose the president and the Senate chooses the vice president. That's right. If more state delegations are Republican and a majority of senators are Democrats, we'll end up with Mitt Romney as president and Joe Biden as vice president. So that thought should keep you amused until 9 p.m. when a majority of the country's polls will be closed. Now at this point, there's no way you will officially know who won. But we're probably getting close, so here's a great tidbit to throw out to your party guests over an adult beverage. What happens if the winner dies between election night and inauguration? Well, though we elect a president on election day, the Electoral College still has to meet to actually cast the votes that represent how their state voted. If the president-elect dies after the Electoral College meets, then it's simple, it'll be the running mate. But if it happens before, then it's down to the electors to decide who they'll cast their vote for. You might see party leaders trying to convince the electors to vote for someone other than Biden or Ryan. Do you doubt that a campaign for Hillary Clinton could emerge if Obama were to win the election and die before the Electoral College met? At 10 p.m., we'll see some more poll closings, including Iowa, but now is when you also might start to see calls emerge for some important swing states that were too close to call earlier in the night. It's all building up to 11 o'clock, when California's 55 electoral votes will likely be called for Obama. The question is, will California be enough to put him over the top as it did in 2008? If not, you might have to prepare for the idea that it could be a while before you find out who won, maybe a few hours, maybe even weeks. At 1 a.m. when the polls close in Alaska, if you're still sitting around doing electoral math, you might be ready to ditch the whole electoral college thing in favor of a straight national vote. Yeah, it might be more democratic, but consider this. What happens if the national vote ended up being as close as the Florida vote was in 2000? How chaotic would that recount be? We can tell you this for sure. We regularly find mistakes in the vote count when we research elections. Look at this handwritten official vote tally we found from 2004 and do the math. This is how 13,000 votes can easily become 1,300. Sure, it was eight years ago, but this kind of stuff happens all over the country and was a big part of the chaos in Florida. If 2 a.m. rolls around and you're still watching TV, you might need more help than we can give you in one video. But at least you'll be the smartest person in the room at your election night party. And maybe you want a better two. In any case, save us some refreshments. We're going to be working all night. And don't forget to vote.